check it out. This is my snake I got today. His name is Meliodas. He is a banana calico ball python. And this is his little tank. They say don't mess with them until, you know, they've been here like a week or so. So just wanted to introduce him. I'll put a picture in right here. Hi, Meliodas. Are you having fun under your little log? What are you doing? Are you having a good time under there? Come one, come all. I'm the chief. You witchy Sabrina. Come with me to a land far away. Sabrina. <laughs> Let's play. Okay, guys. So that was Meliodas. You can welcome him into our house. Um, if you like snakes, totally give me an emoji. So I used to be scared of snakes. I mean, when I was little, I did have a snake. And I don't know, maybe somebody likes snakes. Maybe you have a snake tattoo. Maybe you have a necklace that kind of looks like a snake. I don't know. But anyways, um, so when I was little, I had a snake of my own. And it was, her name was Bertha. And she was a ball python, a green one. And she was such a sweet snake I loved her and like since I've moved to Alabama I've totally been afraid of uh, snakes so I have joined this group on Facebook and I've been learning all I can about snakes like there's so many snakes that are not poisonous that are so beneficial so I mean I don't know if snakes resonate with you but, yeah, like, I am over my fear of snakes. I mean, obviously, I will be afraid if I see a poisonous one. But most snakes are not even harmless, okay? So I just wanted to say that. And thank you guys for all the love that you gave me, your likes and your subscribes and your comments um, about me and my kids being sick. Like... Oh, I hate being sick. I'm still a little sick, but I don't know. Doing readings makes me feel good, and the kids are quiet right now, you know, and I don't always get that. So I would go live, but one, I don't know if people would actually show up, and, like, a little part of my younger childhood issues, you know, like, I worry about that kind of stuff. Um, anyways, and another one why I don't go live is because my kids are always everywhere, you know, so they would be interrupting all the time. So, yeah, because in this house, I play with them. We dance, you know, at least an hour a day. I'll just turn on the music and I tell them that whatever plays is what God wants us to try and dance to, you know, and we either dance or sing or, you know, whatever. We just, we play, we play. And I wish I would have done that before, but I was in, um, survival mode. So now I'm becoming, now that I've healed, I'm becoming the mom I always wanted to be. The mom that doesn't yell, the mom that, uh, always calmly and patiently at least tries to be calm and patient, you know, like this gentle parenting stuff, you know, I'm that mom now. And people are like, well, why don't you just punish him? I'm like, I'm not going to punish him. Like he can have a natural consequence. Like if you keep throwing the ball, I'm going to take it away. I don't know. I'm doing the gentle parenting thing. So if you guys are into gentle parenting, leave me a comment. Leave me an emoji. If you like snakes, totally leave me an emoji. Um, the whole thing about snakes today. Oh, I saw the most beautiful picture, by the way. The person that sold me um, Meliodas, his name was actually Flick, but we named him Meliodas after the Seven Deadly Sins um, anime. That was my son Connor's favorite anime. Well, one of them. Um, but anyway, somebody might be going through some sort of awakening, but I'm not talking a normal awakening. You're like, Sabrina, I've already gone through awakenings. You probably have, but you're going to be going through the kundalini awakening where the snake within your spine stretches up to the higher selves. You will feel it. I feel like everything will click for you. You will have answers to things that you've been wondering. You're like, why did this happen? Why did that happen? I don't understand this. I don't understand this. The universe is going to show you 
either they're going to make someone tell you or they're going to show you in a dream or in a vision, you're going to have answers and everything is going to start clicking, okay? I don't know. You're going to have answers and he's like, how did that open the door? You're going to, you, someone's getting a door opening. A door is going to be opening. A door is going to be opening for you. You're going to be like, how did that door open? Your angels are going to show you. Wow. So like a week ago, I, um, I've been starting to do this too. It's like, I've been something will happen and I'll be like, well, why did that happen? And then later my angels or my guides or my ancestors or my grandparents, you know, um, they're with me all the time, but, um, I will see, I will see why it happened. And it's funny because I was doubting that my grandpa was in the kitchen with me and I was about to crack an egg and this thing fell off the dishes that I had done and literally cracked my freaking egg. And I was like, wow. But anyway, so I had a vision. <laughs> this is my son. He's totally gaming. Sorry. Um, so I had this vision and somebody you're having visions and you're not listening. You're not listening. So I had this vision. Hold on. I need to shut this door. Okay, so back to my vision. I was leaving Walmart after picking up my groceries, and I had a vision that there was going to be a black SUV, like, smash into my van where my son Lincoln was. Exactly. And the car was going to flip, and we were going to die. Um, so when the light turned green... I hesitated. I was like, you know, usually I would have been like, yay, let's go. But no, it wasn't like Mario Kart. Zoom, zoom, zoom. No, it was more like I hesitated and I didn't go and I looked. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, there's this black SUV just plows through the red light and stops mid intersection. And had I went when the light turned green, he would have hit exactly where my son's door was. Do not fight your intuition. If I would have said, fuck you, intuition, I'm going anyway, I may not be here doing this video right now. So somebody, you are fighting against your intuition and your intuition and your angels. They're like, they're showing you. They're giving you signs that they're there. Maybe they're flickering light bulbs. Maybe they're cracking eggs for you when like, you're like, huh, that was a weird coincidence. That was a weird coincidence. No such thing as a coincidence. It's either something that was meant to happen, a lesson you're about to learn, or um, somebody showing you that they're there. And my son is clicking his little pencil. Like, yeah, your guides are clicking their pencil. They're like, hello, we're here. Can you hear us? Do you hear us? Stop running. Stop hiding from us. Okay, I was going to use my runner deck and make this a twin flame reading, but I'm also feeling like I'm meant to give you guys a reading from your guides. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We're going to look into what does your spirit guides want you to know right now? Because you guys keep fighting them. And your card just flew across the floor and landed on Lincoln. All right, this is our card. All right, let's see. So usually I do all this stuff behind the scenes, um, and I don't, like, bore you guys with it, but we were talking about signs, and I needed to lift this up so literally you guys can see the freaking card. And for some reason, I sat this book here earlier, or one of my kids did. Like, I don't even know why, and now I know why. Exactly. See, you're like, why did I do this? And then later, you're going to find out why. So some of you are going to find out why. We have stand back boundaries. So what I'm getting with this, stand back boundaries. I feel like something might be coming in for somebody. Something's coming in and I'm hearing that song. It came in like a wrecking ball. It's coming in like a wrecking ball. Something that you may have said no to before is coming back in. 
something you were like, no, I'm not doing this. No, get out of here. You're going to learn something about this. You're going to learn something about something that you had to put boundaries up for. Why did you have to put boundaries up for them? Because that's the way it just had to happen. Like, if you didn't do it that way, you wouldn't be where you are now. You wouldn't be in the same path. And that's your life path. Like, you had to go through that shit to get to the other side. You can't... You can't ride two horses with one ass. I'm hearing that. But I'm also hearing... Um, you have to go through the storm to get to the sun. So for somebody... You're like, I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I did this. It's just going to click. It's going to click for you. You're going to know exactly why. Tell me more. Tell me more. The hanged man. This is something you have been thinking about a lot lately. Maybe you really feel like you need to let it go. Also, this is my deck. If you guys want to purchase it, check out my Etsy store. It does take three weeks to get to you because it comes from China. But totally worth it all right so yeah and maybe if you guys purchase this week I will give you a free reading any of my decks I will give you a free mini reading okay one question and it can be anything I don't care but if you purchase one of my decks you get a free reading for this week only so the link is down below if ever you need a link and it's not down below, totally check out one of my other videos because it's always there or just, you know, my link tree is down below too or on any of my TikToks or whatever. My link tree is in my bio on my TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So, yeah. All right. So you have been holding on to something. It might even be a grudge. Maybe you told somebody to get away from you. No, this isn't happening. I'm standing up for myself. I'm setting a boundary. And you've been thinking about this a lot lately. Tell me more. Being reckless. The fool in reverse. You did something spur of the moment. And you feel like you made the wrong decision. You're like, I did this. And I think I made the wrong decision. I'm seeing somebody like they took the wrong road. You feel like you took the wrong road. This road's broken. I can't get there. Stephanie from Just Keep Swimming the other day said in her reading, and oh my gosh, you guys should watch it. Um, Just Keep Swimming 11.11, okay, <laughs> on YouTube. Anyways, um, she did one about the karmic and where the karmic is. And then she did one about the masculine. And then she did one about the feminine. And in the feminine's reading, it said that the masculine was trying to paint the roses red. Like they're painting the roses red. Um, so maybe you feel like you painted. Oh, my God. And look, red roses. Well, they're pink, but whatever. Still freaking roses. Okay. And white. White dog weird you might be seeing red and white I'm just saying um so you painted the you're like I painted the roses red to try and make something work but it didn't work now I feel like I took the wrong road I did it wrong but your guides want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong you did it right you cannot rewind it there is no pause rewind button nothing all you can do is move forward. All you can do is change it. Maybe you put boundaries up with someone because you thought it was the right thing to do at that time and now you want to take those boundaries down. You're like, I don't want to I don't want to have these boundaries anymore. Like I don't want to have these boundaries anymore. <laughs> That's what you're saying. And I was thinking about the Alice in Wonderland cards, so of course I had to grab my Alice in Wonderland cards. But you put up a boundary. I hope you guys can't hear the music because it will say it's copyrighted. But one, I like to channel through music. <laughs> Plus, I really like having music. So music speaks to me. It's my connection to the divine, to be honest. Like, I just asked them to tell me what it, anything. They're like tarot cards to me, to be honest. Like, I show you guys all the time how I channel through music.
um, somebody might be having some sort of court thing because my phone just said, John, your lawyer is on Snapchat and he was my lawyer for divorce. Somebody might be going through divorce or a custody battle, okay? And you're like, oh God, you put up boundaries with this person and you're like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing going through this divorce or this breakup? Nonsense. It's time to talk sense. The universe is saying, you know, your intuition has told you this is the way to go. Maybe you have been listening to the signs, but you, you're afraid. So if this was a toxic relationship, um, I tell you guys this all the time. If this was a toxic relationship, weird. If this was a toxic relationship, and I felt like I couldn't speak right there. So somebody, you feel like you haven't been able to speak in this relationship. You've had no voice. Maybe you got in trouble for having a voice. Maybe they judged you for having a voice. But it's all nonsense. You're telling yourself nonsense. It's time to talk sense. You know you did the right thing. Your guides told you you did the right thing. You needed to put up this boundary. You need to get this divorce or this breakup needs to happen. If this is a toxic relationship, though, remember, when they give you those breadcrumbs of love, after all that hate, you get that boost of dopamine. That's a drug. For your brain, it's like you're hitting cocaine or heroin or or taking a drink. Okay, so the song Expectations is playing. Um, it's a kid song. <laughs> anyway, it's like I'm past your expectation. I feel like this person, you thought it was going to be something great. They painted the roses red. They were like, I'm painting the roses red, making it look real good. I'm painting, painting, painting the roses red. So they don't see I'm a liar. <laughs> this person is just wearing a mask. Maybe they're being nice to you right now because they want to get back in there. They want to do it. And you're like, I need that hit. I need that hit of love. I need that dopamine. You, my friend, let me tell you something nobody ever told me that I had to figure out the hard way. You are addicted to that dopamine hit. You have an addiction. Just like if someone were an alcoholic or someone were a... Um, a druggie or whatever. You have an addiction to this person's dopamine. And I'm telling you, it's going to hurt like fucking hell to get rid of this person. And I just told someone this today, actually, on my, um, I was actually going to talk about this on my other channel, angry, abused, pissed, I'm sorry, abused, angry, pissed off housewife, something like that. Anyways, link down below. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's for abused people or even, you know, like, not just physically, but mentally too. So if you ever wanted to look at that, I feel like you can't breathe. For me, somebody tried to choke me. That was my thing. So I don't know if somebody tried to choke you or just quiet you or if they're going to try and choke you if you go back to them. I feel like if there's abuse and you've left this person and you're thinking about going back to them, it's just your fucking detox and your withdrawal talking. Okay, it's just the addiction talking because if you go back, it's going to be worse. The next round will be worse. The universe wants you to know the next round will be worse. You can go back if you want to. And you have believe strange encounters. You need to believe in your guides. You need to believe in the choices that you felt when you were sober, okay? You are not sober. Well, you are sober right now. You're going through detox. You're going through withdrawal. It's easy to relapse. So here's what I want you to do. If there's pictures that make, that when you look at them, it makes you feel disgust for this person, look at those pictures. Watch those videos. If it's just memories, think about those memories. If it's, I want you to write down everything that you hate about this person, and look at those pictures. And when you miss this person, I want you to tell yourself, we are okay. We are just going through withdrawal. This is supposed to happen. This is totally normal. We will be fine. And I don't even want you to acknowledge this person as a person right now. I want you to say, my addiction or my drug. 
the drug, whatever, whatever you need to, but don't acknowledge this person as a person. And remember, they're only trying to give you a hit of that love so they can reel you back in and they're going to treat you 10 times worse. Every time I took back my ex, it was worse and worse. Like, I remember this one time he drug me through the house by my hair and he choked me and like banged my head on the fucking ground. And then he thought the next day since he bought me a brand new minivan, um, that would make up for it. And he gave me lots of love for a little while. Watch Big Little Lies. She talks about how after he abuses her, she gets to be in control for a little while until he gets to be in control again. It's seriously don't doubt yourself get the divorce get the breakup it's going to get worse believe in yourself believe in your guides don't listen to your ego's nonsense bullshit don't listen to your withdraw say fuck you withdraw i don't need that drug i can give it up guys the song that's playing right now is i ain't your lonely call I ain't your lonely call. Let it ring. Let it ring. This person's calling you. They're like, hey, I'm so sorry, baby. I love you so much. I want to do you like this. I'm going to change it. It's all a crock of dog shit. Okay? It's a lie. They don't have the ability to change. A narcissistic person, a toxic person doesn't see anything wrong with them. They will fight you tooth and nail. They could drink from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to bed. And they could sit there and tell you, no, I didn't. You didn't see that. The fuck? Or they could hit you and then they could turn around and tell you that you fell down and you just remember it wrong. And then you choose, okay, yeah, I'll, I guess I will remember it wrong because that means that I get to be in love. They know how much you want to feel love, my lovely, lovely person, but they use it against you. I'm so sorry. But in the last couple of years, I've given up toxicity, toxic relationships. I've given up sex. I've given up alcohol. I've given up cigarettes. I've given up sugar. I've given up soda. And I've been addicted to soda my entire life. I've given up, my, my new thing is I am giving up processed food because I don't want to put any more garbage into my body. Like I was looking at my instant tea and I'm like, yay, I'm going to drink this. I'm gonna, it's going to be so tasty. I'm going to be so good. And then there's some sort of maltroxetin or something like that. I don't know. But it's a drug and I Googled it and I was like, what's this for? And it says that the side effects for it is weight gain. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm not doing all this work to gain weight when I drink something that's not supposed to make me gain weight. So my mom and I, we made some delicious moon water tea. We put water in our tea and we cast spells on it. It was fun, you know? And then we put it in the moonlight on the full moon. We're gonna do a lot more. It was so good. And then the next day we put our tea bags in and we let the sun hit that like all day long and it tastes so good. I feel so good. Like when you're not stressed and you're not hurting and you're eating properly, like just not putting junk in your body, you can still eat whatever you want. You just it's a little harder, okay? So, yeah. And you have choices. It's your choice. It's your choice. If you'll walk down that bad road, look how sad she looks. She's broken and bruised. Maybe she's not bleeding, but her mind is fucked. She's like, oh, I don't know why I stay here. Okay, so it's like you're eating a bag of chips. And those chips are not very good. They taste like shit. And you're like, why do I keep eating them? I don't even like them. Because they put drugs in there that make you addicted to the chips. Yep. Yep. They put drugs in there that make you gain weight. They put drugs in there that make you sick. They put drugs in there like that cause problems for us because they want us sick. 
They don't want us dead and they don't want us healthy because the pharmaceuticals can't touch us then. The pharma, pharma, the big pharma. Yeah, see that? I couldn't even say it. They don't want people to know that. Did you know there's been people that found cures to cancer and they magically died and all their research was went missing? Yeah. So I'm not going to get into that or politics or anything because I know that people won't want to like talk about that stuff. But do not let this person reel you back in. You found a reason to live, a reason to get better. You will get there. You will. It might feel impossible, but if you just tell yourself this is just my addiction, it's so much easier. Because I would always tell myself, I didn't know I had an addiction to him. And every time I took him back, it was like, I felt like I was going to die without him. Like it was, you know, like a, like an alcoholic does when he's, when he's quitting alcohol or whatever, you know, it's like, oh my God, I need a hit. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I need a hit. But isn't there anything that we can do? How do we make it better? There's gotta be a way. Let's paint the roses red. We'll pretend that it works. If he just gets help, you know, I would tell myself, he never went to jail before. He's going to change this time. He never went to anger management before. He's going to change this time. I would give myself all of these excuses. Um, you can't live without him. You know, he, he's, he's the main, he makes the money. You know, you can't live without the money. Uh, the kids need him. There's something wrong with him, blah, blah, blah. He's sick, whatever. You're making excuses because you need the hit and you don't know you have an addiction. But I'm here to tell you, you have an addiction and you can kick its ass. You don't need that addiction. The reasons you're giving yourself are just that. Reasons. Reasons you're holding on. And the only real reason is because your pride and ego is afraid and your body is afraid of losing that dopamine hit. Where am I going to get my next dopamine hit if it's not this person? Okay, spirit. That was a good message. So somebody quit making up excuses. Believe in yourself. You did the right thing. You made the right choice. The choice is yours, but if you go back, it will be worse this time. The universe wants you to know this person is pissed. Show me this person. Show me this person, spirit. Show me this person and how they truly, truly feel. Oh, we're going to go into the darkness. What's really going down in blindness town? Another one of my decks. Remember, you buy a deck from me, you get a free mini read. Whatever question you want to ask me, as long as it's not medical or legal, because legal can go in so many different angles and medical, you legally cannot give medical advice. Like I can tell you what I feel, but I would rather not because if it's bad, I don't like to give bad, bad news, you know, but anyway, this is one of my Dax darkness. What's really going down in blindness town. What are we not seeing? Show me this person. Show me this person's true feelings towards my collective because of this breakup or whatever. Show me. Show me their true. Hesitate. This person is afraid to cha of change. They will hold back and keep you stuck. This person wants to move on as much as you do, but they're also addicted to the drug you give them which is a fix of empathy, a fix of caring, a fix of a narcissistic fix, okay? If you don't know what that is, you might need to Google. And I mean, you should be too. Signs of a narcissist, it's pretty crazy how all narcissists are programmed the exact same way. They act the exact same way, but they've never met anybody. Like, sometimes I think... 
some people are demons and some people are angels in this world and were reincarnated. Or some people are gods and goddesses and some people are angels and some are demons and were meant to fight. Why else would there be wars over such stupid shit? I try not to talk about politics and stuff because everyone's like, shut up. I don't want to talk about politics. Blah. I don't want to talk about the world and the problems with it. Blah. Like, I don't care. I want to talk about it. Like, let me talk. If I want to talk, let me talk. I want to talk. Can't you just be my friend? Can't you just listen? Like, seriously. Somebody else, maybe someone's telling you not to talk. Don't talk about it. Dare. This person is easily distracted and rec reckless. So I feel like this person is easily distracted, meaning like something shiny comes along, they will follow that. If something better than you comes along, they will leave you for that person. But they will, if they did already, if they cheated on you or whatever, um, a narcissist doesn't fully let go of their victims ever. If you let them hold on to you, even a little, let's be friends. And then later you end up together again. It's because they want to know that if shit falls apart with the shiny new penny, you're still going to be holding on. Even if you're the dirty old penny, they still want some sort of supply. Like a snake after a rat. I need to feed. Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, I'm feeling like the next question I gotta grab my Misty Moon deck hold on so the song playing right now is Beautiful by Christina Aguilera maybe you don't feel beautiful maybe this person has cut you down to the point where you feel so ugly and let me tell you I am a beautiful person but after being married to three men that told me how ugly and disgusting and worthless and stupid and whatever I was I would start to look in the mirror and I would tell myself how ugly and disgusting and stupid I was too. And I just cut myself and cut myself and cut myself. And you know, I believe things don't work out with that person because if it's meant to work with one person, it can't work with anyone else. No matter how much pieces you cut off yourself to try and make the puzzle piece fit, it will never work because it's not meant to. You need to listen to your universe because they know your path. They know where you're meant to go. They know what's right for you, and you don't. They give you signs, and that's all they can do. So for somebody, you need to look at yourself and say, Good morning, beautiful, even if you don't feel it. You will learn to love yourself again. I used to, you know, I sat there, and it felt awkward talking to myself, and I would sit there naked and be like complimenting myself and telling myself things and you know just talking to myself the way I want my twin flame to talk to me the way I deserve for somebody to talk to me and oh my god I heard a chainsaw even though it was just my air conditioner I like literally heard a chainsaw I feel anxiety now somebody Somebody's trying to break through your walls. For somebody, be fucking careful. This person might try to break in. I'm just saying with, with, you know, or they're really, 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 really angry with this chainsaw energy. This is a collective reading, so it's different for everyone. But they are going to try to chainsaw through your walls, through your boundaries. And Spirit says, hold those fucking boundaries. Stand back. You don't need that fix. You don't need it. You don't. You deserve better. King of Hell. Unstoppable. Wow. And the cards fell over. Look at this. Look at that devil. Didn't I just say like some people are demons and some people are angels? I really do believe that. Like, I mean, look at Putin. Can you really say that that guy is not a devil? And I mean, like I said, I don't want to talk about politics, but I'm not a big fan of Biden either. Because people would be like, 
fighting with me about politics. Maybe I should. Maybe then you guys will comment. <laughs> King of hell, unstoppable. This person is going to pull out all the stops. They know everything that makes you happy and makes you tick. They're going to do it all. If you wanted them to fix that thing, they're going to fix it. They're going to pretend to fix it. I'm going to counseling now. I'm taking pills now. I'm going to be that person you need now. Honey, a tiger cannot change its stripes. They just can't. A demon can't become a devil. I'm sorry. Wow. A demon can't become an angel. Guys, didn't I say that it would get worse? Like this demon's going to become the devil. So instead of it being... See, everything happens for a reason. Usually I would cut that crap out and I'd be like, you know, but I'm not gonna because it happened for a reason. So one of you needs to know, or you guys need to know, you take this fucker back or this bitch back, whatever. She's graduating or he's graduating from demon to devil. It's happening. It will be worse. And they, you may not be so lucky. Like, I am in this group on Facebook. Um, it's called Break the Silence. And people tell us their story about their domestic violence angel. Men and women lose their life. And children. Today I saw this thing. This mom was learning that her husband, that she stayed with this abusive piece of shit, Killed one of her babies. In front of her. Like they took her to the hospital and they tried to do CPR, but she was already gone. And the mom was crying. But I bet you nobody ever told that mom, hey, you got an addiction. You got an addiction to this fucking toxic motherfucker that keeps giving you that little hit of dopamine. You're addicted to heroin in a sense of a way. In a sense of a way. Nobody told her that. So she could actually have the tools she needed to understand the connection instead of it. God wants me to stay here because I'm so loved. I'll never leave him because I'm so loved. I wouldn't be crying like this if I wasn't so loved. I know that I hate the way that he treats me like shit and the way that he beats me and the way that he rapes me and all that stuff. But hey, God obviously wants me here. I wouldn't feel this way. No, honey, you're addicted. You have an addiction. Maybe our EMTs and our firefighters and our police officers and people that come to a domestic violence situation where a person goes to jail should be saying, you have an addiction. You're going to feel it. But I want you to know it's just an addiction. That way they know it's coming. You're going to detox. You're going to withdraw. Tell them. Tell them the truth. They need to know it so they can actually have a shot instead of going back to them because of an addiction that they don't understand that they have because they're not going every day and snorting anything or putting something into their veins, drinking a beer. They're not doing that. So they don't understand, hey, I've got an addiction. People call it codependency. I call it addiction. All right, Spirit, what's your next message? What's the next message? Whew. Oh, hold on, guys. Okay, so the song that's playing right now is Steal My Sunshine. And for somebody, I'm getting the message, you feel like a terrible person. Maybe you yell at your kids too much. Maybe you've done things. But a narcissist will push you and push you and push you. And then you snap back. And you're the crazy one. Woo! Did you just see the way that you reacted? Oh, my God. You're so insane. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, and then they go back to that every time. Remember when you did this? Remember when you broke that dish? Remember when you screamed? Someone that's being tortured mentally will lash out. And when you're living in survival mode, take you to where the paper is at. I'll be right back. So my son wanted me to take him where the paper is at instead of show him where the paper is at. 
So for somebody, the universe is like, I'm trying to show you where the paper's at. That could be divorce papers. Maybe there's hidden papers. I don't know. But they're like, I'm trying to show you the way. And my son is drawing a maze. He's like, Mom, I'm making a maze. They're, they're trying to show you the way out of the maze. You have went through the maze just the way you were meant to. And now you're coming to the end of the maze and they're trying to show you the way out. The end is a little tricky. The end is a little scary because you don't know what's on the other side of the door at the end of the maze. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful on the other side of the maze. Let me tell you, I am there. It is gorgeous. Um, so for somebody... The universe wants you to know that even though you've done things, you have a conscience. You feel guilty. Your person doesn't. When they do things, they don't feel guilty. Like my ex would still tell me, the last time he was here, he would still tell me, even though he was he had all the mental health, even though he was on the meds, even though he finally had a diagnosis, even though he still said it was my fault fault. He couldn't even say he was sorry. It was still my fault that he tried to choke me to death. It was my fault that he punched me in the eye and broke my optical bone. It was my fault that he, I almost bled to death. Like everything was still my fault. And he wouldn't even admit that he had hit me other times than that. Because that's the only one that can be proven because he went to jail for it. Every other one, he wouldn't acknowledge. He wouldn't acknowledge the way that he treated the kids. Nothing. And they tried. My son said, you think I don't remember all of the abuse? And he laughed at him and told him, what abuse? They don't have a conscience. So if you're like, I feel so bad that I did X, Y, Z. Will God hate me for this? No. You're still God's sunshine. He still loves you. He still sees the things in you. And look at this. This just came out. Forgiveness, Toby Mac. Because we all make mistakes sometimes. And we've all stepped across that line. But nothing sweeter than the day we find forgiveness. Forgiveness for ourselves. Forgiveness for acting that way. Forgiveness for putting ourselves in that situation. We don't have to forgive them for what they did to us. We're not. I don't have to say, I forgive myself for letting him beat me in the face. I mean, I kind of, I kind of need to forgive myself for staying in that situation, yes. But it's not my fault that he did what he did. But I have to forgive myself for the things I did that I can't move on from, that I don't forgive myself for. I have to find forgiveness within myself. Because we all make mistakes sometimes. Maybe you've always made that as your excuse. We've all stumbled and we fall. Bridges burn in the heat of it all. But nothing sweeter than the day that we find forgiveness. So you need to find forgiveness in yourself. You need to find forgiveness in yourself for telling yourself you weren't good enough. For telling yourself that because you did one wrong thing that you should be punished. For telling yourself that you deserve this. For staying in that situation. Find forgiveness. God wants to mend your heart. No more painting the roses red. God is mending this. They're showing you the way. But you're doubting because you have an addiction. Don't let your addiction take over, my loves. You got this. You know the way. And I'm hearing from Pocahontas, Mother Willow telling Pocahontas, You know your path now, child. No. You know your path, child. Now follow it. I'm hearing your guides loud and clear. They're telling you, you know the way. Stop being afraid. Man up. Woman up. Whatever. Time to move on. Time to forgive yourself. Time to let go. And time to do it. You know the way. 
They showed you the way. Now follow it. If you don't know the way, you are about to be enlightened, my lovelies. Like I said, Kundalini Awakening. Google it. Kundalini Awakening. Your snake is awakening. Your third eye could be awakening. You could be getting a vision and you're like, ooh, I don't know if this is a vision. It is. You know it is. Listen to your heart. Listen to your intuition. Do not listen to your ego. And definitely, 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 100% do not listen to your disease. Yeah, codependency is a disease. Your maze is done. Guys, you hear that? The maze is done. It's time to leave the maze. It's time. I'm seeing Jumanji, you know, at the end where they have to call up the name, Jum go up the hill and call up the name Jumanji. It's time for you to go up the hill now. You're at the hill. They're showing you how to get to the hill, but you're not going up the hill. Yeah, my brother's oh, up my throat the hurts. And, um... You need to go up the hill and you need to call out Jumanji or whatever. This is the way. It's scary, but it's the right way. You, you're you doing it right. Listen to your intuition. Listen to your guides. You do know the path. Okay? It's time to follow it. So... That was a lovely message from your guides. So I was closing down this video, guys, but the song is playing. I will hold you tight and I won't let go. I will stand by you. I will hold your hand. The universe is like, I am with you. I'm standing by you. I'm holding your hand. I know it's scary, but you got this. We are with you. This is the right way. They are standing next to you. If it's time to leave that relationship, leave it. If it's time to divorce that person, divorce them. I know it's hard. I know it's scary, but it's the right way to go. If it's time to return to somebody that you set boundaries with before, You know, but you feel like they're going to push you away. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Whatever you're going through, the Lord wants you to know you are forgiven. And they are holding your hand. They're holding you tight. And you are okay. You are okay. I love you guys. I hope that this helps somebody. If it did, totally leave me a comment. And please like, subscribe, share. And like I said, if you buy any of my decks, this week I will give you a mini reading, one question reading, none of this one card bullshit because you guys know I don't do that. I'm not going to be like, I'll give you one card. No, I'll give you one question because I'm not going to give you one card. I don't feel like it answers your question. I want to answer the whole question, not leave you like, but what about this? You know, I hate that stuff. And if you guys would be interested, if I decided to go live, you know, we could do a reading and maybe I could do, you know, live questions. If you guys would be interested in any of that, let me know down below. Because sometimes I'm lost and I don't know what to do. And I am still sick, so... I will try to make videos, but when you got sick kids and you are sick yourself, it's a little bit difficult. Um, so I love you guys, and you are you are right where you need to be. Okay? It doesn't feel like it, but everything is right where it's supposed to be. You are almost out of the maze. Keep going. Do not let your addiction get the best of you. Sending you love, light, and healing. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to join my YouTube family and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Love you guys.